Hi, this is John Gabriel with The Gabriel Method, and as you probably know, I lost over 220 pounds and have kept it off for over 10 years now. But what you probably might not know is that in order to start losing weight, I stopped doing cardio altogether. Many people assume that I spent hours a day on the treadmill, but it's just not true. I stopped dieting and I stopped doing long, boring cardio, and that's when everything changed for me. If this is the first time you're hearing about this, it may seem radical, but I can assure you it's now mainstream information and it has the potential to change your life forever. For weight loss, for most people, long, slow cardio is probably not the right approach, and for many people, it can be extremely counterproductive. I made this short video today to teach you a much more fun and effective alternative to the treadmill. This is the same approach used by celebrities and fitness trainers to burn fat efficiently and safely. It's the fitness method that I use to this day and it's based on cutting edge counterintuitive information that's only been out for the last 10 years or so. But before we get into the research, let me tell you a little bit about my story. Back in 2001, when I weighed over 400 pounds, I used to go to the gym every day and I spent 45 minutes or even a full hour on the recumbent stationary bike. Do you know the machine I'm talking about? It's like a big lazy boy recliner with pedals. And I'd sit there, pedaling my brains out, watching Seinfeld reruns on the TV monitors. And after all that work, the bike would tell me I'd burn a measly 400 calories. My personal trainer said it was a victory, but after all that exercise, I was really hungry. And 400 calories is nothing. It's basically just one bagel or one slice of pizza. So what's the point? Now I was tired, bored, and hungry. My trainer thought I was just being weak and lazy with my attitude, but intuitively, I'd come to a conclusion that today is now scientifically proven. Here it is. Long, slow cardio for people with extra fat is almost never the best way to approach weight loss. Here's the problem. Most people go to the gym to work out, and by work out I mean they work their outward body, they run on a treadmill, lift some weights, or whatever. But in order to lose weight, what we know now is that the best approach is not to work out, but to work in. By work in, what I mean is to use exercise to change your internal biochemistry so that after you exercise, your body burns fat and craves less food. This is when your body wants to be thin and weight loss happens naturally. See, exercise done right is not about burning the maximum calories, because even if you burn 400 or 500 calories in the short term, who cares? You haven't solved the real problem. Exercise done right is about changing your biochemistry and putting your body into fat burning mode all the time. It's about naturally reducing your hunger and increasing your energy. Every day I talk to people who are struggling to lose weight, but the one question nobody seems to ask is, does my body even have the ability to burn fat right now? And in most cases, the answer is no. The reason is because your body's hormones are out of whack, specifically the hormones leptin and insulin. Let's talk about the hormone leptin first. Leptin is the hormonal messenger that tells your brain how much fat is on your body, and that influences the level of your hunger and cravings. In more primitive times, leptin would tell your body to burn fat in the summer and store a little extra fat in the winter to keep you nourished and to keep you warm. In our modern world, with indoor heating and an abundance of food, we don't really need fat at all. So leptin's role in our life should be very small. But unfortunately, just the opposite has occurred. With our highly processed modern diet, our stressful lifestyles, all the emotional challenges you and I face, not to mention the toxins we're exposed to, leptin's communication with the brain is often impaired, and eventually your brain stops listening to leptin. Leptin is trying to communicate to your brain, enough already, stop eating. But it says it so many times that eventually your brain doesn't hear it anymore. Your brain just tunes it out. It's just like the story of the boy who cried wolf. And that's why you get hungry at 1 in the morning, and why, even after a big meal, you still want more. Your brain simply can't hear the message that leptin is saying anymore. The next big hormonal challenge is insulin. One of insulin's most important roles is to keep your blood sugar stable. Excess glucose in the bloodstream is extremely dangerous and can lead to nerve damage and even death. So insulin rushes in and stores that extra sugar as body fat as quickly and efficiently as it can. In the short term, this is great. You're safe. But in the long term, this process is a weight gaining disaster. Insulin basically is the fat making hormone. And these days, it's very common for your blood sugar to spike many times throughout the day or even all day long. Blood sugar spikes occur when we eat refined and processed foods like cookies, breads, and sweets, but it also happens from stress. See, stress causes your blood sugar to rise, which causes yet another insulin response, all of which leads to fat storage. And here's where it gets tragic. Just like with leptin, your cells eventually become resistant to insulin. 
So more and more insulin is needed to manage your blood sugar. And more and more insulin means more and more of the fat storage hormone is constantly available at any meal. So in this state of hormonal imbalance, every time you eat, your body is poised to store fat. Insulin also tells your body not to burn fat. So in essence, you lose the ability to burn fat. So you end up with more cravings, more fat, more hunger, and less energy. This is a vicious cycle that I'm sure you experienced even if you didn't even know why you experienced it. And if you're watching this video right now, there's a very good chance that your body is both leptin resistant and insulin resistant. Basically, your body has lost the ability to burn fat and that's why it's so difficult to lose weight. Using the Gabriel Method, we teach dozens of approaches to get your body back into balance, including stress relief, balanced eating, emotional release techniques, and lifestyle choices. But one of the more powerful tools when used properly is exercise. Exercise done right starts to rebalance your hormones right away. Your brain starts to hear the message of leptin again when leptin says to your brain, enough already, stop eating. And your cells become more sensitive to insulin. So little by little, you have less and less of the fat storage hormone in your system. You feel less hungry, you burn fat more efficiently, and you just don't have to think about it. If you've struggled with diets and exercise programs that didn't work in the past, I can't tell you how amazing it feels to get to a place where naturally and without any force or restriction, you start to lose weight. And if you approach fitness the right way with a work-in approach, it can be a huge help along your journey. I've recently created an at-home video training program that teaches you Gabriel Method style fitness, and I'm very excited about it. It's a fun and effective exercise program based on the most effective cutting-edge research and what's worked for both myself and my clients. But before I tell you more about that, I'd like to share with you an excerpt from the program. It's a short video roundtable discussion where I talk about the benefits of Gabriel Method style work-ins that are intense, short, bendy, playful, with plenty of rest. Welcome to Gabriel Method Fitness. And the concept, what we're gonna be doing is a little bit different than a normal workout. We're gonna be doing what we call work-ins. And the reason why we call them work-ins is because rather than just burning calories, which is a typical workout, we're actually gonna be changing your internal chemistry so that your body actually wants to be thin. It's not just about calories in, calories out. It's not just about burning calories so that you can eat more. And I remember just to give you a little bit of background, I remember when I was, when I was over 400 pounds, I, I used to go to the gym and I'd ride the stationary bike for an hour. And you know how sometimes the stationary bike shows you how many calories you've burned? So I ride it for an hour and it burned 300 calories, which is like, you know, 1,200 kilojoules. And I'm thinking to myself, 300 calories, that's like a bagel, you know? <laughs> you know why, not, why not just not eat a bagel? <laughs> and save yourself an hour's worth of exercise. And when you look at exercise as a calories in, calories out kind of thing, it's true. It doesn't burn that many calories and it makes you tw 10 times hungrier. So when I'm done the exercise, I, I burned a bagel's worth of calories, but then I want 10 bagels, you know? So that didn't, that didn't work for me. And studies have shown that that's not the way to, to lose weight. What we're doing is we're changing your internal chemistry so that you're not burning calories so much, or not just burning calories, you're actually getting your body to want to be thin. And it's, it's a different concept, and you don't have to do it for a long period of time. So it's not about calories in, calories out, and in fact, it's not much exercise at all. We're talking about doing four minutes of a certain type of exercise, four minutes of another. The whole thing can be done in 10 to 12 minutes a couple of times a week and you're changing your, your internal structure. So we're very lucky to have with us um, our head coach, Coach Brian, Brian Killian, who is who's, who's a fitness trainer and a naturopath with 20 years experience in the fitness industry. And he's very passionate what, about what he does. He's gonna be helping us and guiding us through these work-ins. So I just wanna introduce Brian to you guys. So Brian. Thanks, John. 
So just backing up what you've said, there's some fantastic evidence to support what you've been saying. There was a, a Japanese researcher named Azumu Tabato who did this research project where he took two groups of people. One, one group of people he put through a protocol known as now the Tabata protocol where they did 20 seconds of high intensity exercise followed by 10 seconds rest and they did that eight times. And then the other group, what they did is they put through 20, 20 to 30 minutes of medium aerobic activity, so like walking, jogging, riding a bike. Now interestingly, at the end of the control group, at the end of the period, they found that the people that did the Tabata protocol lost more weight, gained more strength and improved their aerobic capacity as opposed to the other group. Now that changed everything. You know, fitness trainers everywhere, you know, stood up and said, well, you know, here we are getting people to run for hours on end, lifting weights for hours on end, but we can, we can make a, a short interval training program that's going to have the same effect. So it, was, it really was quite revolutionary. What's cool about the fact that there's so much research now behind this, and I, I read another study where they took two groups of women. One group was on a treadmill, no, was on an, one group was on an exercise bike for an hour a day, seven days a week, just doing straight line exercise. The, the other group was on an exercise bike three times a week for 20 minutes, but during those, during those 20 minutes, every once in a while they would sprint for 11 seconds, just 11 seconds, that's all, sprint for 11 seconds. That group lost three times as much weight as the other group and they're exercising one-fifth as much. But the key is that peak intensity. And, and what's cool is that there's the research behind it, but I came up with this approach theoretically because I said to myself, you know, what would make your body want to be thin? Well, if we were living outdoors thousands of years ago and we, we had to run away from tigers, you know, if there were tigers out there and, we, and all of a sudden they'd come out and they start chasing us, well, it, that's going to make your body want to be thin. That 10 seconds of running away from a tiger. And by the way, I thought about this too. You know, you don't really need to be faster than a tiger to escape being attacked. You just have to be faster than the guy running next to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> See you later, Bob. <laughs> Always like you. But you have to be fast. If you're not fast, you're dead. That's, that's, we call this the get thin or get eaten adaptation. That is, it's an adaptation in our body, a survival mechanism, that when there's tigers out there and we gotta run away from them, it's a survival mechanism that makes your body say, we need to be thin in order to survive. And if your body thinks that you need to be thin in order to survive, you lose weight. And chemically what happens is certain things, like we talked about this leptin resistance, your brain starts listening to leptin. There's a chemical that takes place when you're sprinting. There's a chemical that gets secreted in your brain. It's called corticotropin releasing hormone. It's part of the stress response. That chemical, when that chemical gets released in your brain, your brain becomes more sensitive to leptin. It starts hearing leptin. It knows how much fat you have in your body. It goes, whoa, where'd all this fat come from? You start losing weight. The other thing, the other part of the exercise is the, the resistance part, which Brian's gonna talk about, is sort of like wringing your muscles out of stored sugar. And when you wring your muscles out of stored sugar, your muscles wanna suck sugar up again. And the way your muscles suck sugar up is it becomes very sensitive to insulin. So you reverse insulin resistance, your insulin levels go down, you become very efficient at burning fat. So those two chemical changes combined get your body to want to be thin. Brian, why don't you talk a little bit more about what these work-ins are gonna be like. Okay, well how we put together these work-ins is that First of all, we have a resistance stage. In that resistance stage, what we're doing is we're wringing out the glycogen out of the muscles. When you wring out that glycogen, that's your immediate energy source. Once that's gone, the body is forced to replenish. Because as you can understand, if you don't have that immediate energy source, then if you are attacked, you don't have any energy. So what the body will do will go into fat burning mode to replenish that immediately. So that's done first. Once we've done that, we're going to move you into that high intensity interval training, like you know, following the Tabata protocol, which is fantastic for getting you to, to burn fat in a very short period of time. Now, the Gabriel Method is about the mind-body approach, and the Gabriel Method Fitness follows that same approach as well. So what we've done is combined this research that we've got with the type of exercise with the visualization. We've come up with a very, very unique tool to enable people to burn fat and also to apply that mind-body approach. Alright, so you mentioned visualisation. What does that have to do with it? 
Well, you know, visualization is a really powerful technique for getting your mind and body to work together. What's interesting about visualization is that your body doesn't understand the difference between a real and imagined experience. So when you visualize something happening, your body thinks it's really happening. So you know how like you have a dream, for example, and uh, you, you dream that you're being chased by a tiger. For, you might wake up, your heart's pounding. Your heart's pounding because your body thinks it's really happening. So what we, the way we use visualization for these work-ins is that when you're in peak intensity, you actually can visualize something chasing you and your body will think it's, ha it's really happening and your body will think, well, the reason I'm moving so fast is because we're running away from something that's trying to eat us and it activates the get thinner, get eaten adaptation. So it's a great way to get your mind and body to work together to stimulate this adaptation and get your body to want to be thin. So does overtraining come into this? Well, you know, that, that's a really good point about overtraining. It, it, there's been a lot of studies, when you talk about the chemistry of your body, there's been a lot of studies that if you exercise too much, you'll get something called overtraining. And overtraining, what it does is it causes your cortisol levels to become elevated. And elevated cortisol levels is the same thing that happens when you're in a famine. And it causes your body to become leptin and insulin resistant. So it actually gets your body to want to be fat. And studies, they did research with uh, cross-country skiers at the University of Colorado where they were doing more and more exercise. And the more exercise they were doing, the more they were losing weight. But all of a sudden, they got to a certain point where they weren't losing weight anymore. They actually started to gain weight. Now, they're exercising more, but they're gaining weight. So, so, for, so for us, what we're going to be doing with these work-ins is we're only going to be doing them. You only want to do them maybe keep in mind they're 12 minutes from start to finish you got a warm up you got the resistance part you got the run away from a tiger part you got the cool down the whole thing each interval is four minutes the whole thing from start to finish is going to be 12 minutes we only want you to do this two three at the most four times a week you want to have rest days so that your body can recuperate so that your body can have an opportunity to change on a cellular level and on a metabolic level and that you can be fresh for the workouts and they can be intense and so that you don't overtrain. So that's a really important point. And most people think, again, when you're looking at calories in, calories out, and most so-called experts will recommend that you do an, an hour of cardio a day, seven days a week, because they're thinking it's burning X number of calories, but you're not looking at the changes that your body's making on a, on a cellular, on a hormonal level. When you do that type of exercise, you're causing your body to actually want to hold on to weight. So you want, you want to exercise less, you want to exercise smart, intense, get your body, mind and body to work together. A perfect example of that is if you look at, if you look at Olymp Olympic sprinters. Olympic sprinters have zero body fat. I mean, they look like an anatomy lesson. And all they're doing is 10 second sprints. You compare them to a marathon runner. Now a marathon runner is not fat by any stretch of imagination, right? But actually marathon runners have more fat on their bodies on a percentage basis than sprinters. And these are people that are running 15 miles a day, seven, seven days a week. And they've got more fat on their body than someone who's doing 10 second sprints. And that's because the sprints are getting your body to want to be thin. They're changing that structure, that chemical structure. They're activating the get thin or get eaten adaptation. So Brian, what do, what do these workings entail? So we've come up with five fundamentals to Gabriel Method Fitness that we're applying throughout all of the workings. The first one is that it's brief, short. The, the workout needs to be short. We don't want it to turn into a develop. We don't want it to develop into a chronic stress where you develop overtraining syndrome, as John was speaking about. So the real work, the, the whole working is, you know, somewhere between eight to twelve minutes total. The second one is that it's intense. It's that intensity in the in the exercise that's integral to the effectiveness of the working. It's really important that whilst you're doing these twenty seconds on, twenty seconds off, that that twenty seconds on is that you're going as hard as you possibly can considering your present level of fitness. The third one is that it's playful, okay? Exercise needs to be fun. It's really about movement. You know, we talk about fitness, we talk about exercise, but it's really movement is what we're trying to encourage, you know? I know from my own experience with training with people that have, who have had a weight problem, the idea of going to a gym or exercising is just, you know, there's like so much negative connotation associated with it. So we've been working really hard to make the, the workings you know, fun and enjoyable to encourage people to get into, into movement really is what we're trying to, trying to get them to do. Um, the fourth thing is that they're bendy, okay? Your muscles need to be long. For them, when their muscles are longer, they're stronger. So you'll find that in our workings, a lot of the exercises are like we're going through a full range of motion all the time 
and we're incorporating some, some warm up and some cool down stretches to lengthen your muscles. Also there's really interesting studies that show that your, your ligaments act like energy conductors. So what we're trying to do is like lengthen them and break any adhesions within, the, within those so you get nice positive energy flow. So rest is really important and that's the last fundamental that we applied in Gabriel Method Fitness. When you rest you're a cover, when you cover is where you repair and it's in that recovery and repair is that you actually get the real gains in terms of your, in terms of your fitness. So within a working there's like four stages, there's a warm up, there's a resistance, there's a get thin, get eaten adaptation stage and then you follow it up with a cool down. You know, Brian, I just want to say also that you talk about how, you know, typically when people are overweight, they don't want to exercise. There's a real chemical reason for that. You know, when, you're, when your body wants to hold on to weight, when it goes into this sort of survival mode, because keep in mind that weight, weight's a form of protection. And originally it was designed to protect us against famines and cold weather thousands of years ago. So if your body, for whatever reason, for whatever chemical reason, thinks that it needs to hold on to weight, you, it's going to slow your metabolism. It's going to make you tired all the time. You're, you're not going to want to exercise. But through all the different things that we're doing, we're changing our body's internal chemistry. Those fat programs are getting turned off. You're going to have more energy. So what we find is by doing work-ins like this and by doing some of the other suggestions that we make, your, your energy starts to pick up, your, your metabolism speeds up, and you want to get out and be active. And so these are different ways, like we've, we've got different work-ins here. One of them is just playing in the park with kids. You know, we, 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 there's different ways that you can do a work in and make it work by playing in the park with kids. One is playing tag. You know, if you're just playing tag or playing frisbee or, or soccer or any of these things, you're sprinting, you're running, especially tag, you're running away from something. So you, you've, got that, you've got that thing. And then for the, for the resistance, for the strength thing, you, you can do like, you can have, you can take your kid and put him on your back and do a piggyback ride or, or you can do a wheelbarrow race where your kid's holding your, your ankles and you're, and you're doing, you're working on a wheelbarrow. You can climb on monkey bars, you can do the flying fox. There's lots of ways to, to make it fun. So we've tried to, to create as many different variations. Some of them you're just doing at home. And, uh, and I know Brian came up with this idea of water bottles. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, why we're using water bottles. Whatever you've got around the house that, that you're able to hold on to easily and safely will work perfectly well for any of the resistance work that we've got uh, incorporated into the workings. I often find that, you know, with my own clients, that, and they just waste so much money. They're buying treadmills, they're buying weights, they're buying mats. You know, they've got all the gear which is really completely unnecessary. You've got all the stuff you need at home. We came up with the idea that these work-ins, we want people to be able to do them at home without having to go off and buy any expensive equipment and you know, waste hundreds of dollars. So we're just using water bottles as our waste. So, you know, one kilo, a, a one litre water bottle is a kilo. So that's, you know, that's a fine. That's fine for the resistance training. So what, what level of fitness do you think uh, an individual would, would require to, um, to carry this out? Well, you know, that, that's a good question. And what we've tried to do is we've tried to make these work-ins as, as user-friendly. So if you're really fit, you're going to get it, a great work-in. You're going to have that chemistry. And if you're just starting out, and even if you've got 100 or 200 pounds of extra weights, which, again, I did, you know, 10 years ago, you can do these, and we're structuring them. For example, when Brian's saying to do squats, you can just bend your knees just a little bit. It's just the movement, whatever you can do. Obviously, you have to get your doctor's approval before starting any fitness program. That's essential. But we're structuring them so any level of fitness, anybody at any size, in any shape, is going to be able to do these work-ins and benefit from them. Mm, and your results are, are yeah. quite remarkable, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're, they're incredibly effective. And in considering the fact, especially that you're talking about 12 minutes a couple of times a week. It just, it, to me, it's perfect. And you know, I'll just tell you a story about how I kind of discovered this concept of you know the get thin or get eaten adaptation. I discovered it. This was after I had uh, lost. I, I lost a total of 220 pounds. This was about 10 years ago. But after I'd lost about 180 pounds, I remember I was riding my bike one day, and. I just had this thought, you know, I really want something to take my fitness to the next level so I can get all the way there because I was so close and I was so motivated at that point. The second I had that thought, this dog came out of nowhere and started chasing me. And he's going, bah, 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 bah. and he's like, he's got these little nappy canines. He's this close from taking out my Achilles tendon for a kilometer. I'm standing up, I'm going, oh, I'm going as fast as I can, my heart's beating. Finally, I lose him. The next two weeks, I just dropped weight like crazy. I didn't do anything different 
in my routine, weight's fallen off of me. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And then I made that connection, that it was that experience of having that little yappy dog napping at my ankles that did it. And so what I used to do then is whenever I got to that place in the bike ride, I would stand up and I would imagine this dog was chasing me. And it worked really, really well. And it took me the rest of the way. Eventually, I got so good at it at the visualization side of things, that at night I used to go to sleep and just imagine I'm in perfect shape and I'm sprinting and I'm running away from something, and that works. It's really, so it's not just about the mechanics of your body, it's about working with your body in a mind-body approach to get your body to, to want to be thin. If your body thinks that you need to be thin in order to survive, you will lose weight, guaranteed. So, so remember to do the visualization when you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, so we're trying to make it simple, easy, and, and just be as intelligent as possible in a mind-body way to, to, get, to get your body to want to be thin, to change this chemistry, and be as effective as possible. And that's what we're doing. So if you guys are ready, we can just get right into it. What do you think? Okay, cool. So I hope that video helps you understand the best way to use exercise for weight loss. And more importantly, I hope you got some good tools that you can use in your own journey. The big takeaway here is that you don't need an expensive gym membership or any fancy machines. You don't need a personal trainer or a bunch of complex routines. You simply need to activate your get thin or get eaten adaptation by doing Gabriel Method style fitness. I'm talking about short, intense, playful, bendy exercise with plenty of rest. The video clip you saw is an excerpt from a comprehensive at-home fitness program called Gabriel Method Fitness. It's led by Gabriel Method coach and trainer Brian Killian and myself. Brian is an integral part of my team, and together we've created an extremely fun and approachable at-home program unlike anything you've tried before. For starters, each work-in is only 15 to 20 minutes long, including a warm-up and cool-down stretches. So in terms of time commitment, anyone can find 20 minutes. Secondly, you don't need any fancy gear or any personal training. You can do it in your living room, at the park, or just outside your home any time of the day or night. Lastly, and probably most importantly, it's fun and effective. You'll see and feel the benefits of it straight away. In the program, you'll experience high-intensity work-ins on the bike, on your feet, and it includes stationary routines you can do in your yard or in your living room. You'll learn simple resistance training, effective stretching, and safe and steady warm-ups. As an added bonus to the program, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite post-exercise video recipes. Some of my most popular fitness visualizations you can put on your MP3 player, and I'm also going to give you access to my Gabriel Method Fitness Timer. The Fitness Timer is a really cool online tool that allows you to set it and forget it. So your workings get done quickly, on time, every time, applying the Gabriel Method principles. I had a ton of fun making this program, and Coach Brian and I put together a really great system designed for people just like you. People that want an approachable, easy, extremely effective way to use exercise as a tool for getting your body to want to be thin. The program was filmed in beautiful Noosa, Australia, and I think you're going to love it. It's a digital program, which means you can get access right this minute and get started immediately. For complete details on this new Gabriel Method Fitness program, please scroll down to learn more. So thanks for watching. I hope I've managed to change your view of fitness and exercise for the better, and I hope to speak with you really soon. Take care.